the entire money structured and materialistic oriented society is a false society. Our society will go down in history as the lowest development in man. We have the brains, the know-how, the technology, and the feasibility to build an entirely new civilization. It was living through the 1929 Great Depression that helped shape my social conscience. During this time, I realized the earth was still the same place. Manufacturing plants were still intact, and resources were still there, but people didn't have the money to buy the products. I felt the rules of the game we play by were obsolete and insufficient. Misery, suffering, and war provided the incentive for my life's work. I was also motivated by the seeming incompetence of governments, the academic world, and the lack of solutions offered by scientists. I realized instead of working with individuals, a more effective method would be to redesign the culture. This began a lifelong quest to finding solutions to the many problems that we have today. This presentation is a feasible plan for social change that works toward a peaceful and sustainable global civilization where human beings, technology, and nature coexist. It outlines an alternative to strive for, where human rights are not only paper proclamations, but a way of life. It is called the Venus Project. Its founder, Jock Fresco, calls for a straightforward redesign of the culture in which war, poverty, hunger, debt, and unnecessary human suffering are viewed not only as avoidable, but totally unacceptable. It is becoming increasingly obvious that anything less will simply result in a continuation of the same problems we face today. The Venus Project's research center, constructed by Fresco and Roxanne Meadows, is located in Venus, Florida. It addresses many of the root causes of our difficulties, but what are the real origins of our problems? At present, we are left with very few alternatives, since we're on a collision course of our own making. Answers from yesterday are no longer relevant. Considering the damage already done to the environment, we are rapidly approaching a point of no return, where nature will dictate the course. Either we continue as we have, with outmoded social customs and habits of thought, thereby threatening our future, or we apply a more appropriate set of values, relevant to a sustainable society, with more opportunity and freedoms. Americans have been conditioned in, a, in their kind of society to get a different kind of car next year, to buy a new television set or a tape recorder. We are radical as hell, but our political and social institutions have not changed. And this is where we are stagnating, because we always equate, equate any new idea with communism or regimentation, because we've been brought up to fear that which is new. None of the world's economic systems, socialism, communism, fascism, 
or the free enterprise system have eliminated the problems of elitism, nationalism, racism, and most of all, scarcity. These are all based primarily on economic disparity. When money is used to regulate and distribute resources for profit and people and nations are out for themselves, they will seek advantage at any cost. They do this by maintaining a competitive edge or through military intervention. War represents the supreme failure of nations to resolve their differences. There are patterns of behavior that promote survival. There are social conditions that change our values and outlook. No one can write a constitution of required behavior without consulting the environment. So we'd better take care of the environment, we'd better take care of one another, and we'd better educate people to the highest possible levels of our ability in order to have a society. Even a peace treaty cannot prevent another war if the underlying causes are not dealt with. Maybe what is needed are ethical people in government who will work towards everyone's well-being. But even if the most ethical people were elected to high positions and we ran out of resources, there would still be lying, cheating, stealing, and corruption. It's not ethical people that are needed, but rather a way of intelligently managing the Earth's resources for everyone's well-being. We find ourselves and our social constructs in a transitional state, a matter of social evolution. If we want to make it through these turbulent times, we must be able to adapt to change. All things change, including our social systems. Albert Einstein stated, we cannot solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. Earth is still abundant with resources, our practice of rationing resources through monetary control is no longer relevant and is actually counterproductive to our very survival. Today, we have highly advanced technologies, but our social and economic system has not kept up with our technological capabilities, which could otherwise easily create a world of abundance for all, free of servitude and debt. How can this be possible? There is not enough money to feed or house all people on this planet, let alone accomplish these more ambitious ends. But Earth has more than enough resources to meet the needs of all people, but only if managed intelligently. A resource-based economy operates on the basis of available resources and makes those resources available to every human being on Earth, free of charge, without a price tag. So we have today more than enough resources to build a far more advanced society. I'm not talking about limited handouts so that people just get by. I'm talking about a very advanced civilization. We have the resources, we have the technology, all we have to do is apply it. One of the main aspects of the Venus Project is to eliminate scarcity. This is where the technology comes into play. Because if we set up a resource-based economy and some things are scarce, it, it won't work. If you set up a resource-based economy in, in a society that has no resources, it won't work. So today with our technology, we can make things available. We can eliminate scarcity. We can create an abundance. As long as we can create that abundance, that will eliminate greed and selfishness and a lot of crime and a lot of aberrant behavior. A social system can be designed so that all can live fully and constructively if the powers of science and technology are directed toward human and environmental concern and overcoming the artificial scarcities of our debt-based monetary systems. All people, regardless of political philosophy, social customs, or religious differences, ultimately depend upon the same resources, clean air and water, arable land, medical care, and a relevant education. 
I think if you pledge allegiance to the earth and everyone on it, that'd be the way to go for the future. The human species is a single family, and the world is home to everyone. Neither nations nor people can coexist separately any longer. No more separate nations. So anyone can go anywhere. Before the states joined together, they used to stake out their territory. They used to fight. They had militias. They would fight. This is our territory. Oh no, you're intruding. When all the states joined together, the government worked out the lines of the states and they agreed. And that was the end of territorial disputes. If you are the end of war, you must declare the earth common heritage. This has nothing to do with those who want to form an elite world order with themselves and large corporations in control and the rest of the world subservient to them. On the contrary, a global resource-based economy enables all people to reach their highest potential where they can thrive and grow in a society that works in their behalf, a society that protects and preserves the environment as well. One that understands that we are part of nature, not separate from it. Some question what would happen to incentive if needs were met without our having to work to attain them. The question assumes humans have no desires beyond basic needs. If that were true, there would be no inventors writers or teachers. People work with passion on the things that interest and challenge them. Let's enable all people to have the opportunity to partake in the greatest challenge one can have, improving our world everyone. Individuality will be emphasized rather than uniformity. This social arrangement will generate a new incentive system that values the protection of the environment and social concern rather than the shallow, self-centered goals of wealth, property, and power. It does not call for uniformity. It absolutely calls for diversity. The more diverse people are, the more individuality. So we emphasize individuality, creativity, innovativeness. This is the essentials of the design. It is not a group of scientists telling people what to do, how to live, where to go, what to follow. Motivation and incentive exist when people have meaningful tasks. True growth and development occur when people are involved in creative, challenging, and constructive endeavors. However, motivation and incentive die in the daily grind of boring and repetitive jobs required to earn a paycheck. If you hand out things to people, if you fed them and clothed them and housed them free, they're not going to work in the morning because they don't need it. They got the housing, clothing, motion pictures, and entertainment. Well, why go to work? Work is painful. It's monotonous. It's boring. In the future, if, if people have access to all their needs, but they don't have any challenges, this is where it goes to pot. So people constantly are challenged by new things. In our schools, we challenge them with many things that are not solved and many unresolved problems. If you're well-fed and well-clothed, that doesn't stop your brain from working. That would mean that every millionaire does nothing and is turned off because he got all the means. That's not true. There are many millionaires that work 18 hours a day and don't have enough time. It has to do with your background and your education. The more you know about oceanography, astronomy, and all that, the more interest, the more alive you are. And if you're just given food, clothing, and shelter, now you can go to work. You don't have to worry about making a living, which your incentive would be boosted considerably. So I call that a new and innovative incentive system. Uh, it's not monetary oriented. It's problem-solving oriented. And you get your kicks out of seeing the world become a better place. <laughs>